On Rastel or Rastal lives between 1475 and 1536, probably born in Coventry. He learns philosophical and grammaticals at Oxford University. Married before 1910, he is Thomas More's brother-in-law. Rastel is an eclectic personality and he has several professional activities. Amongst others, he is a lawyer, an entertainer of the royal court and, around 1509, he becomes a generalist publisher interested in law and theater. He also writes a chronicle related to English history in his latter days. During the 1520s, he adds music printing to his business and, following various sources, it seems that he finds a personal way to practice unique printing, like Pierre Attainment in France. Let us remember what music printing is. It is a type of printing where all the elements of a sheet music are printed in a single operation. How is it technically possible? In practice, each single removable character includes a fragment of the staff line and a musical note the same for each of the following characters. It is not nothing, as a music type generally includes more than 400 characters. In this context, John Rastel is the first English publisher to print polyphonic music. Only two pieces of music are conserved. One of them, named One Way More Ninge, was printed around 1526. But it seems that Rastel published a lot of musical works, for the internal English market. The font used to print the conserved works, less regular and advanced at the technical level than the one used by Petrucci in Italy, would have been the work of Rastel himself. Otherwise, these two pieces of printed music are in a large format named Broadside. Broadside is, from the 16th to the 19th centuries, printed on one side, inexpensive and easy to distribute. It is a cheap form of entertainment, at least for those who can read music. It is gradually replaced by chapbooks and newspapers, but in the middle of the 16th century, around 400 of them are printed yearly and, during the 18th, the well-known collection of music ballads assembled by Francis James Child is still printed in this format. It is unclear if Rastel was successful at the financial level in his activities of music printer and he apparently lived in poverty at the end of his life. In fact, he was also a member of the parliament and he fought against the payment of the tithe by the crowd to the clergy. For this reason, he was thrown in prison. John Goff, who acquired the music fund of John Rastel after Rastel's death was apparently a generalist printer interested in music. He printed psalms around 1540. Along with several other generalist printers like William Sears and John Day, he would have printed some dozens of sacred and secular music books between the 1530s and the 1570s. During the second half of the 16th century, the printing of sacred music is prominent in England notably psalms and spiritual songs. The first book of secular music is printed in 1571 by John Day. It consists in a collection of songs written by Thomas Withorn, a composer and music tutor who frequented Oxford University. Let us notice that William Sears in 1552, under Edward VI, and John Day in 1557, under Mary I, both receive a royal license to print Psalters. Of course, these licenses, whose principle was initiated by Henry VIII and which are an elementary form of musical copyright, reduce competition in a market whose contours are less sharp than those of the Italian or the French sheet music industry during the same period. Actually, we see that, in England, sheet music printing is the fact of generalist printers who have other sources of revenue and who are concurrenced by foreigners, like, for example, Leormand a Dutch publisher who prints around 40 music books for the English market and double impression, the staves being printed in red. Another foreigner, the French Thomas Vautrelier, prints an English edition of Orlando de Lasso's works. If there is no early specialized music publisher in England, the three countries, Italy, France and England, share similar systems of royal privileges granted to printers and, regarding John Day, the privilege is renewed, his son Richard taking advantage out of it. Well-known composers, William Byrd and Thomas Dallas are both members of the Royal Chapel and, in 1575, 
they both receive a special privilege from Elizabeth I, to print music and import sheet music in England, during 21 years. However, unlike the ballads in France, Bird and Talis do not try to prevent others to print music and they even make a partnership with the French Thomas Vautrelier to publish their own compositions. With them, music books containing madrigals become more frequent. student of William Byrd, made Bachelor of Music in 1588 and also a member of the Royal Chapel, Thomas Morley, author of sacred music and profane pieces like madrigals or ballets, is also patented by Elizabeth I to print music. A church organist, Morley is active as a music printer during the last quarter of the 16th century, until 1602 in a period during which music practice as a serious leisure begins to emerge. It is one of the various factors which explain the success of Morley, who is conscious of that situation and, therefore, brings sheet music to another type of audience, to a broader audience. In Morley's context, what is recreational music practice? It is a type of practice whose main target is not to express devotion and religious feelings. That practice becomes more fricay at the end of the century notably amongst the members of cultivated classes, and it requires music teachers employed in that framework. Therefore, there is a real development of the sheet music market during the last 10 years of the 16th century, development which includes an increasing number of reprintings. Another printer is active in the field of music, until the end of his life in 1608. It is Thomas East, born in Cambridgeshire and active in London. He is first a generalist publisher. In 1587, he acquires the music type of Thomas Vautrelier, recently deceased and who had himself acquired the type from a Dutch printer. Thomas East is known for his use of paper decorated with flayerons forming arabesques, in fashion from the 1560s. Thomas East publishes amongst others, a collection named Music Transalpina, in 1588. In 1590, he prints a music book written by Thomas Withorn, duos or songs for two voices. Thomas East is also known for his business skills. With ability, he ran a viable business model in which single sheet printing at scale assured revenue to finance more ambitious printing projects like book publishing. Therefore, he is considered as the first consistent English music printer and publisher. Under Elizabeth I's reign, we may finally mention the prolific activity of another generalist publisher, Peter Short, who, in 1597, prints, amongst others, a book of songs composed by John Dowland. Peter Short is also an innovator. He is the first printer to use movable characters to print strings instruments tablature, notably for the lute contributing to create a standard format for Lutz Song's books. And now that we know the circumstances in which the sheet music industry appeared in Italy, France and England, we may move towards Germany and, secondarily, Central Europe to check who was active there during the 15th and 16th centuries and what they brought to the industry. See you soon on this channel. Meanwhile, as you are a sheet music industry professional, we would like to draw your attention to the existence of the Y Music search engine, which analyzes music using musical criteria based on the content of almost 40,000 pieces of music listed in the Y Music database. Today, music listeners listen to more music in a single year than their 17th century ancestors during their entire existence. However, online music services ask their users to have a specific query in mind when entering keywords, such as a title. Due to these language limitations, there is a gap between listeners' expectations and what they receive. In terms of musical content, it is not enough to type the word inspiring to receive as the first search result a piece of music that will automatically inspire us.
This is even more obvious in a general search engine. If a user writes, in the search box, what are musical pieces similar to the Rite of Spring by Stravinsky, the results include links to different interpretations of the title, pages devoted to Stravinsky's life or to his work. However, no title similar to the Rite of Spring at the musical level is mentioned directly in the results and no link to listen to this similar music is provided. Everything must still be done. Idem for your favorite music. This means that listeners do not receive an answer to their original question. Neither general search engines, nor streaming services, are programmed either to analyze the musical content of a title and provide the results to the user or to establish direct musical relationships between different pieces of music. This is not their function, but it is the project of the Y Music team. We are passionate about our mission, which is to create a technological innovation in the field of music which aims to help all music listeners to understand it in more depth. Developed by a computer engineer recognized for his expertise in the music software industry, Y Music is more than an algorithm that searches for chords or melodies. It is the first musical search engine in the full sense of the term. Together, let us reinforce the achievements of technological evolution in the field of sheet music and allow it, allow us, to go further in our research. We invite you to test Y Music on our website.